Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Anticipation is mounting for today's game, and we've got two quarterbacks looking to make an impact. It's Breeze's Saints going up against Newton's Panthers. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. And we welcome all of our viewers inside a place that the folks around here like to call the Vault. And that's Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Just a moment ago, the lights, the cameras, the action, all the pyrotechnics, everything was ablaze, everything was allowed here in Bank of America Stadium as Carolina emerged from their tunnel. And we are ready to go as the Panthers get set to match up with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And you know, Charles, as Larry pointed out in the open, got a couple of great quarterbacks set to square off here this afternoon. That ball's probably going to be flying all over the place, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. And the game has never been more quarterback-centric than it is now. And both of these teams have top-flight signal callers. The children will groan. It's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They're led out by their six-foot quarterback. You may have heard of him from Purdue. It's Drew Brees. His numbers are big time, but what really impresses me about Drew Brees, his consistency. 37 touchdown passes in 2016. His ninth consecutive season with 30 or more touchdown passes. That's an NFL record. And he moved past Dan Marino last year into third place on the NFL's all-time passing yardage list. Throwing on first down is Breeze. And it's caught, Kobe Flaner. And he's going to be out of bounds at the 39. 14 yards there on the first play from scrimmage. That's a matchup. Maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues. Yeah, I think back to my high school coach, John Ford, he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays, he'd always say, follow it away, lad. Follow it away because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation. They may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say laddie or did he say lad? Yeah, it just depended on what he was feeling at the okay. moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about that used to say laddie a lot. Laddie? When you heard laddie, he was usually in a pretty good mood. Lad? Eh. Now it's AP, Adrian Peterson. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. And a very good offensive unit here. One of the reasons they're so good is running back Mark Ingram. Took a little while for him to find his footing when he got into the league, but the former Heisman Trophy winner has it now. And it's really upped his pass receiving potential. A nice player. See if they stay on the ground for second down. To throw is Breeze. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Kobe Flaner, the tight end, his intended target. And it's third down. And the starting crew defensively for Carolina. When I saw that the Carolina Panthers were ranked 21st in total defense in 2016, I thought it was a misprint. This is a very talented defense, but they didn't play up to those standards in 2016. Perhaps the loss of Josh Norman at corner hurt them in the secondary. Luke Keekley, their middle linebacker and their heart and soul of their defense, wasn't able to play a complete season, and they didn't get the same pass rush in 2016 that they had in the previous year when they went to the Super Bowl. Off the play fake to Kamara, it's Breeze. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. 
And here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. They'll be brought out by their seventh-year man out of Auburn, the 2015 NFL MVP. It's Cam Newton. That word focus is used so often in the NFL, and I think that in this case, the word refocus will come to mind when you think about Cam Newton. 15 wins in a Super Bowl appearance after the 2015 season. Last year, just six wins. I think Cam comes back with a whole new dedication and a new way of doing things, moving the ball around and maybe the running backs a little bit more instead of carrying it himself. They'll run. This is Jonathan Stewart. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. It's a guy carrying the ball. Your eyes are going to direct your feet, and you're hoping they carry you to the open spaces. But it's awfully difficult at times because you have so many things you have to look out for. Where's the line blocking? Where's the traffic coming from? Tough to find open spots. To throw on second down is Newton. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. They were looking to get it to Kelvin Benjamin there. And that takes us from second to third down. And the offensive starters for the Panthers. The number eight overall pick in the 2017 draft, Christian McCaffrey, to me, was the most complete running back coming out in the draft. He can run inside, gets to the perimeter, can catch the ball. In fact, I think he runs routes better than any receiver that came out in the draft. He's a complete package, and boy, will they have fun with him in Charlotte. Third and long, it's Newton. Gets it to Benjamin, it's caught. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Last year, New Orleans dead last, number 32 in passing defense. Something that was exploited game after game. You know, though, those guys are tired of hearing about it. Now they just want to fix it. And you fix it with players playing better. We know that. But also you fix it with scheme. You look at what you have and say, can we play the style that we played in 2016? And you and I both know the New Orleans defensive staff. They like to be aggressive. They like to get after the quarterback, put their guys a lot of man coverage. Maybe we'll play a little more zone in 2017, take some of the pressure off of the back end of the defense. And now first down following that long game. Newton gives off to Stewart, and not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. And now a look at the Saints starting defense. The New Orleans Saints have struggled on defense for the last few seasons. In fact, they ranked dead last against the pass in 2016, but they do believe they are getting better. Defensive end Cam Jordan has become one of the better all-around pass rushers in the league, and they picked up Sheldon Rankins as a rookie last year and expect to get a full season out of him in order to increase their numbers on D. They keep it on the ground again to Stewart. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. The Saints with an extra defensive back here on third on the field. Could they blitz? From the gun, here's Newton. It's caught, Shepard. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And they convert on third with a gain of 22.
tough set of downs here. Now it's Newton. Looking for Shepard deep. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss on one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. He definitely wants that one back. to the air. Newton on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. They'll fake the handoff. Now Newton. And he'll go out of bounds down inside the 15-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. I have no crystal ball up here. I can't truly see into the future. But if they don't start getting some pressure on him, make him move around a little bit and do something with the receivers to you know, change up their timing, they're going to get shredded, as we've seen so far. Right now, they're off to a blazing start. Yeah, and you are right. He looks way too comfortable back there in the pocket. Yeah, there shouldn't be a pillow back there for him, all right? <laughs> if, as, as a defensive guy, they've got to dump him on his backside a few times, shake things up. Yeah, they're going to need an in-drive adjustment here on this first series. And the head coach reaches for the red flag, tosses it down on the field. He wants a challenge here. So the offense has it first and 10. Newton turns and hands to Stewart. And he will take it across for Panthers touchdown. Jonathan Stewart, a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Panthers are going to take a first quarter lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. And this will be good to give the Panthers a 7 to nothing lead. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays. And it's capped off by a Jonathan Stewart run. Gano out to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. 
The Saints coming out now to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. They start the drive with Peterson. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. And when you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise. And now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. On second down, here's Breeze. Here's a screen to Powell. And look out, a big hit to the shoulder pads took him right off his feet at the 47-yard line. That good for 19 at a first down. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. fake here on first down and they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete the target that time Michael Thomas and it's second down This is Mark Ingram, and able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. Now Breeze on third down. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. This one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. The Saints defense ready to set up shop again here. And last time out, they got scored against. Their offense hasn't given them any help to this point, so maybe they need a stop here. A stop obviously would be nice. Not critical at this stage of the game, but one of the things that you want to find out from your defense, are you really ready to play? After giving up a touchdown on the last drive, let's see if they have a little bit better spark, a little bit better bounce in this series. We'll see if they have that spark and that bounce right here. And tough starting field position here. They'll start the drive with a run by Stewart. And a nice pickup as this one gets him to the 10 yard line. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. 
Well, that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. A shotgun snap for Newton. This one complete to Devin Funches. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20-yard line. Newton finding Funches for the Panther first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is? to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. To throw is Newton. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. The tight end, Ed Dixon, was the target. And now it's second down. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. On second and ten, Newton. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Give him six on the play, and it'll be third down. The Panthers on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and four. To the air again, Newton. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Cameron Jordan with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Now a man who subbed in for Andy Lee down the stretch last year, Michael Pilardi, to kick it away. Back deep for the Saints is Ted Ginn. <laughs> well, when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you've got to think about, okay, what kind of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? Churning, he lost the football, and his guys are going to get the football at the 23 yard line. So, the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do, didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Now Stewart on first down. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. 
They tried to run the counter, just that the defense wasn't fooled. And when they're not fooled, you see the end result because what you're doing there, you mentioned the counter. You're using your offensive linemen sometimes to pull or move to influence the defensive front to go in that direction and create the space back in the other side and block it appropriately. But you're exactly right. Didn't move him, sat there waiting for him and made the play. On second down, they run with Stewart. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. And if you're the defense and those D tackles, you like that they're trying to run the football here against your 4-3, don't you? Yeah, because they tend to eat things up because they are so strong and physical, and especially when they play with leverage where they get lower than the offensive linemen and control them. And what I love about the good defensive tackle, they can play over the guards, they can slide and play over the center. Nobody in the offense likes that day when they have to deal with those guys. A swing pass caught, and they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. We often, with Cam Newton, talk a lot about his legs. Don't forget about that arm. He can throw it on a rope. He can loft it. He's got the touch that's been developed throughout his career. But the big part about just watching him throw it, it seems almost effortless. in the red zone this time. First and goal here from the two. Try to punch it in, Stewart. And he is in. Touchdown, Carolina. Jonathan Stewart with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Panthers add on to their lead. And a pair of rushing touchdowns now for him in the first quarter. And I'm liking what I'm seeing from his big guys up front because they're winning the leverage game. How many times have we talk about low man wins, right? Move the defensive front aside, create those gaps and holes. He's found his way through them for two touchdowns. And after both of those touchdowns, he went right up to that O-line and hit each of them on the helmet. That's he a, recognized That's it. a smart man. You know what else he should do? If this continues, take them all to dinner. So that drive, four plays, and it's capped off by a Jonathan Stewart run. Gano out to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. They go play action here on first down. And they will elect to decline the penalty. Everything turned out the way they wanted it to. No sense in even having to take that one. Hence the decline. Thank <laughs> you. 
Following the penalty, it's Peterson. And he'll lose yardage here, back to the 15. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. That was a nice play by the defense, but the offense can't let that one play to final. Let it go, move on, and start over again. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. From the gun, it's Breeze. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Here's Thomas Morstead now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Panthers will get it here as they take possession. Stewart on first. And not a whole lot doing there. So he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. One quarter in the books. 14-0 is our score. We're back to Uptown Charlotte after this timeout. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. They've got a second and nine to start things out. Nine yards still remaining here to pick up the first on second down. This is Stewart again. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The Panthers on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and seven. Here's Newton. And that is incomplete. Here's Michael Pilardi now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. <laughs> Good open field tackling there. A 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Panthers' defense gearing up as they take the field. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of? Great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out, you feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. 
Nifty move there on the run, but ultimately brought down at the 25. And oh, this is Peterson remaining down on the ground and apparently in some pain. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. to the ground this time with Ingram and he will lose yardage here back at the 23 yard line they'll wind up losing three and now it's third down we just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game really at the point of attack the offensive line is just getting pushed around I think now as a play caller you got to give them a little bit of help maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking but you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now the Saints on third down 0 for 3 to this point they could use a conversion this will be third and six throwing now is Breeze and he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Now that's third down 101. You got to go to the marker, know where it is. Here's Thomas Morstead now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Now Jonathan Stewart getting set to go as he trots back out there. And he's found the end zone twice, and now I'm guessing he's thinking, hey, let's find it three times. And you got to figure from the defensive perspective, how has he gotten there twice? What are we going to do to keep him out for a third time? How do we tighten things down? Because he and his offensive mates, they are really in sync right now. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. From the end zone, Newton. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds, because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? Here's Stewart, and he'll go down after losing yardage at the 10. He lost two there, and it's third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to see? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. The Panthers on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and run it. Here's Stewart. And he'll lose yardage and be down at the seven-yard line. And a loss of three to bring up four. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but... Um... 
Looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed them for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Here's Ginn. It's a net of 40 there. A punt of 48 and a return of eight. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Now we'll see what Michael Thomas and the rest of the offense has in store here. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far just a single catch in this game. Inside the 45 before going out of bounds. A gain of six there on first. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had to read figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. Again on first down, Peterson. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Breeze to throw on second down. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by James Bradbury, and he'll take it across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. Ah, oh, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball, and I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now following the interception, here's Newton. And this is caught. It's Greg Olson. And he is out of bounds just a yard or two shy of the 30. And that one good for 16, and the drive will continue. We've been together a little while now, partner. How often do we actually describe tight ends as nifty? Because that's what I think of when I see Greg Olson on the field. His ability to run routes, create space and separation, and make those catches downfield. Yeah, sure consistent. The numbers the last couple of years almost identical and both over 1,000-yard seasons. Right, 
They go play action with Stewart. Now Newton. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Ten yards still left on second down. Draw play, Newton to Stewart. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. The Panthers on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and six. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that at just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. And Gano's kick is right through. And the lead will grow. It's now 17-0. So a good snap, good hold, and that one's right down the middle. Never in doubt. Just the way you used to hit them, Brandon. <laughs> After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. down here's a run with Peterson and now running right through it and he gets this one just shy of the 40 they'll mark him down at the 39 it's a pickup of 16 there and it'll lead to a new set of downs awfully nice to see Adrian Peterson back and running well look it was just 2015 when he won his last rushing title got hurt in 2016 and that season became a bit of a wash yeah it did become they're hoping to get back to that old form that you're alluding to though he does have three rushing titles including that one you mentioned in 2015 Again with Peterson. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. That man has still got it. Thomas Davis can do it all. Drop into coverage, rush the quarterback, and of course make plenty of tackles. Closing in on 1,000 career tackles and consistent. Last year, 106 tackles. The year before, 105. College safety turned linebacker in the NFL. What a career. Bree's going to throw. No, he almost had it. Already with one interception, just missing his second there. But nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete.
The Saints on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 10. Working from the gun. It's Breeze. And that is incomplete. Tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. They haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Here's Thomas Morstead now. He's been terrific so far. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Here are the Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, try to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. This is Stewart. Nifty move there on the run, but ultimately brought down at the 25. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. By the way, partner, that was a 30-year-old running back carrying the ball. Yeah, <laughs> turned 30 back in March, did Stewart. Yeah, I know that people say that you're not supposed to at the age of 30, but Jonathan Stewart, good style, good physicality. He'll continue to run it. Hoping to keep him healthy. Hasn't played a full 16 games since 2011. They'll run it now out of the gun, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. At this stage of the game, the run-pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. scrimmage no gain on the play and it's going to bring up a third down the Panthers on third down they're at 50 percent four for eight this is third and seven From the gun, Newton. And he gets it to French is complete. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard right near the 39. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Encroachment, defense. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves.
They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Following the penalty, here's Stewart. And he'll go down at the 28. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. We remind you that coming up in two minutes time, we'll hand you off to Orlando where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. So they pick up the first down after the run and now they approach for the fresh set. Newton to throw. They'll set up the screen for Stewart. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. They hold him to only two there on the screen. It's second down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. second down going for it all and they went for a big play through the air on second down couldn't connect now it's third I'm gonna need some help with this one how did he miss it wide open in the end zone he's not hurried he's not hit and somehow incomplete yeah what happened during film study that's one where he's just gonna shake his head not be able to believe it six points go by the wayside on that one Throwing on third down, Newton. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Shepard. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. had a chance to talk things over and we'll see what they come up with here on this next play. in a touchdown. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. Stands. 
Gano for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. A 10 play drive that time. And Carolina scores to cap it off. Gano out to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he's going to be out of bounds here on the return at his own two-yard line. Only able to get it to the two-yard line on his return. Not going to make a lot of friends on your team when you only get it that far. Now we'll see what Michael Thomas and the rest of the offense has in store here. Hasn't had his best day to this point here in the second quarter. They're losing. you got to think, though, that also means that maybe the defense doing a good job on him. There's two sides to that coin. I would agree, so you have to give them credit, but that means you've got to find a way to beat that defense and make sure one of your top playmakers touches the football and has an impact on the game. Change formations, change where he lines up put him in motion, anything possible to shake him free. Maybe that greater impact comes here on this drive. Peterson gets the handoff from Breeze, and he is knocked down from the side at the four-yard line. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Again, Peterson. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. Eight yards there, getting him out of danger. It's a first down. That was a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. It's been a very one-sided game so far. They got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series and they need a big adjustment here to try to put some points on the board. So it's halftime here in Charlotte with the Panthers out on top as we'll send you down the coast to Orlando where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Panthers are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Saints didn't play their best and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Panthers have possession early in the first. Benjamin's got nobody around him on the catch, and he'll eventually be brought down, but not before getting to their own 43-yard line. 
same drive. Stewart's got it on the run, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. Panthers up by a touchdown. Offense out now after the fumble. Newton's on target here, and he'll eventually be brought down, but not before getting to the two-yard line. Panthers now later on the drive. Stewart's looking for room to run, and a quick three-play drive ends with a score. Panthers have it late in the second as they move out in front, 14-0. It's Cam Newton targeting Curtis Samuel, and he kept up the long drive with the TD. All right, Larry, indeed a one-sided affair to this point as we get set for half two. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. They start the third quarter on the ground with Stewart. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. Second down, here's Newton. And the tight end, Olsen, right side. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Newton on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> they try to fire up the run game with Adrian Peterson. 
And he will lose yardage on the play back at his own 19-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Charles Johnson's stock in trade is coming off the edge and getting to the quarterback. He knows how to make some of those subtle moves inside to help in the run game, and he did it right there. He's an athlete back in high school, played football, basketball, track, so he's a mobile guy. Mobile guy made a nice play against the run. Now Breeze handing to Peterson on the draw. Had a great move on the play as he takes this one past the 25. Seven yards on the carry, make it third and four coming up. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. The Saints on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This is third and four. Shotgun now for Breeze. And that is incomplete. Another drive comes and goes. Still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Taken in at the 22. 12 yards on the return that time. And out will come the offense as they take over. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Newton on first down. It's complete right side to Benjamin. Whoa! It still won't go down. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. fake here on first down. Cam fighting. He lost the football. It's out. But fortunately, a Panther was able to get on this. So Carolina keeps the ball. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. The fumble, but they're able to maintain possession. Now it's second down. A shotgun snap for Newton. And caught left side, Olsen. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. 
the tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. To throw on third down, Newton. And this would complete right side to Funches. A very solid gain of 27. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. From the red zone now, Newton. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction defense. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you've got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. the six. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. Chains are on their sides. It's first and goal from the six. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. A good run of six yards there. Gets him closer to the goal line with second down coming up. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. They go option right, and he takes it into the end zone for a Panthers touchdown. Cam Newton, his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Panthers just continue to pour it on. Partner, it wasn't that long ago that when I talked to these NFL coaches about different innovations in the college game, you can see their eyes roll, and they, they just shut down right away. Don't bring me that Joe College stuff. Well, guess what? The college game has definitely infiltrated its way into the NFL. Yeah, and, so, and these guys, when you're seeing the option defensively, you got to stick to your assignments. I know that's cliche. They didn't do it there. And option football means exactly what you just talked about, assignment football for defenders. And that drives them crazy because you have to think your way through a play as opposed to just reacting and making the play. So that drive goes eight plays. And Cam able to take it himself in for the score.
Gano out to kick this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. It's AP, Adrian Peterson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And that's how you run the football and run it successfully. Big time chunk of yardage picked up, but why? Offensive lineman won at the point of attack. Their leverage way better than the defenders. The low man wins when you're getting underneath and trying to move people. And that's exactly what happened on that play. The offensive line moved the defensive front, created space, and the end result, a fantastic run. Now Peterson. He finds some open field here. Shifts past him at the 45. Peterson and he takes it down deep into enemy territory it's a big run for AP 59 yards so a big run for AP and when you look at the total package everyone knows the level of player he's been in this league but what really impresses you about Adrian Peterson I have to go back to the nickname his father gave him which is AD, which stands for all day, because he never stopped. Morning, noon, night, and that's how he plays the game. No plays over, he always tries to finish things, and he thinks that each and every run he makes is gonna take him all the way to the end zone. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here this close, sneak it. I don't think you even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. Offense working with a second and goal now from the three. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make it third and goal. Luke Keekley combines speed, intelligence, toughness, puts it all together. It makes plays like one we just saw there. He may not be a big-time blitzer, but boy, he knows how to pursue straight ahead and make plays in the run game. This offense so far on third down, they're struggling. 0 for 6 thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. To throw is Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. What a job by this defense all game long. They've come together and really said, no one's crossing our goal line, and they're definitely not going to start right now. You can just see the dejection. Feel like nothing is working offensively. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Lutz's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So a good kick there, and they finish off the drive with three. And that should be the goal for an offense, finish each drive with points. So that's a nice job there to come away with at least something. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. 
Carolina getting set to take the field. And last time out, another touchdown. I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this one's just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? Who? You and me <laughs> trying to get to the airport. That's the roads true. will be fairly that, clear that is by the time positive. we have to leave the booth. his way forward to about the 32. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. So the offense readies for a second and four. They keep it on the ground again to Stewart. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Now well, the offense lining up first and 10. Newton gives off to Stewart, and he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey, and he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. From the gun on third down, Newton. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. He had a quick little spin move, but the door shut fast as he's dropped. He'll get a couple yards on that one, and that's going to make it fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three points. The kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> Throwing on first down is Breeze. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On second down, Peterson. Oh, 
It's a big run for AP. 42 yards. Terrific run from one of the fastest backs in the game today. A guy who keeps defensive coordinators up at night, no doubt. Remember when we were meeting with the D coordinator before the game and all he talked about was run fits, making sure our guys were in the right place so there were no creases? They missed their fits, didn't they? Yeah, there was no fit there. The only fit was at the end when he threw his headset down after that big run. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Another tote for the workhorse here this afternoon, Peterson. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. Well, other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy is going to keep getting the football. And that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. Ready. 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 And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. gun it's breeze he throws and he hits the slant route to thomas back-to-back -back nice plays 12 yards that time and a first down when you and i did the weekly commentary updates last year it seemed like we always used to talk about michael thomas week after week and it piled up 92 catches on the season but the thing that really struck me was doing a new orleans game and talking with a few of his teammates who talked about how much the game meant to him and he was upset with guys he didn't think cared about the game enough. Unusual for a rookie, but it's a good sign for him. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Back to the ground, Peterson. And now a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Bree's going to try and throw on third down. Oh, they would have gotten a conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. It's been that kind of a day so far throwing the football. It just seems like nothing going right offensively. Yeah, it's a catch that should have been made pure and simple. And look, everything else that goes into running a good pass route, throw it all out if you don't catch the ball. Been that kind of game throwing the football so far. Nothing going right offensively. And a field goal obviously means nothing here. They're going to go ahead and go for it on fourth down. Running for it. Here's Peterson. And this is going to be nowhere close. Needed some inches and ended up losing yardage. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And it'll be a turnover on downs. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. 
not able to punch it in. And if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high because mentally you're saying, hey, hey you're in the red zone. We're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. From his goal line here, Newton. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Second down, they run with Stewart. And not much there at all, as he'll get this only up to about the 11. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. So Carolina eating some clock on the ground there, and part of why they were the NFC champs last year, number two as a team in the running game. They played their identity last year. Offensive line, they could move people in the run game. Jonathan Stewart running it. Of course, big Cam Newton could be a short yardage guy. And remember, their head coach, Ron Rivera, a defensive guy. They love to run the football. And he finds a man. It's Olsen. And he's going to have the first down as he's marked down just shy of the 20. Newton to Olsen there for a Carolina first down. These two, Newton and Olsen, they have formed quite a partnership. Olsen, three straight years over 1,000 yards receiving. The first time in NFL history, Charles, that a tight end's done that three consecutive seasons. And the tight end's supposed to be an accessory to an offense. But in Carolina, Greg Olson is the primary receiver. Now Stewart on first down. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Newton turns and hands to Stewart, and he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard in the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. Jonathan Stewart, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Now, that was a big-time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was, and they didn't let him get anywhere near it. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And last time, they had it fourth and goal. Rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind them, try to put together another drive. A yeah, simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. On first and ten, here's Breeze. And he's got it over the middle, Flaner. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pick up there, 22. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. 
So here we go, first and ten now. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Oh, look at Thomas, wide open. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Breeze now on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Second down, it's Breeze. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking to stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, it's Breeze. Over the middle complete. It's Ingram. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Mark Ingram, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Saints make some inroads here to that deficit. Coming into the year, Breeze, 465 touchdown passes. Add another one to the total. You know, it's funny. I just talked with his college head coach, and he told me that when Drew was a sophomore at Purdue, they weren't sure he was truly the starter, even though he started the opening game. And he made a play early in that one where the coach got on the headset and told the rest of the staff, well, fellas, we found our quarterback. <laughs> now we got to make sure we find the rest of our team. <laughs> Breeze hasn't looked back since. And he puts this one through. It makes our score 31-10. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Carolina getting set to take the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Start the drive with a run by Stewart. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be 
is moderado. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady, get those gains, and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> They go play action with Stewart. Now Newton. And it's hauled in by Ed Dixon. And he's brought down after a good game. A really nice gain of 25 yards. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. <laughs> Go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. And now a first down following that long game. Stewart. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. From the 50, Newton. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Greg Olson was the intended target, and it's third down. Off play action, Newton. Looking for Funchess, but it's intercepted. It's Marshawn Lattimore, the rookie from Ohio State. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. Their passing game has been spectacular this afternoon. Finally, a win for the defense. You think maybe there was an adjustment there. Finally gained a measure of, I don't even know if you call it revenge, but got a play done against him, and that's been difficult for them all game long. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. So after the INT, it's Breeze. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Breeze to throw on second down. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Breeze finding Fleener for New Orleans first. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. Second down following the run. Hey, 
Carry number 20 now for Peterson. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. I know flashy plays, splashy plays, as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back -back five yard gains. Didn't force the ball downfield. Picked it up on the ground. Yeah, offensive line, they're getting it done. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Shotgun now for Breeze. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. They run, Peterson. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. They've got it third and goal now as they try to punch in a late touchdown. touchdown grab and the Saints take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash in for six and that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion doesn't it now it'll be a two score game after the conversion yeah I mean there's no doubt with a two score game they're going to have to onside kick it we'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve and you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game And the lead will be cut down to 14. So this drive spans seven plays, and it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And it looks like the Panthers' hands team does its job. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Carolina getting set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They run here with Stewart. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left.
So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. See if they stay on the ground for second down. This is Stewart again. And he'll go down at the 28. And the Saints signal for another timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Now Stewart. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout. So as they talk things over, we'll step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. So following the run, we'll see what they do here on third down. They'll try and run it. Here's Stewart. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one. Maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. This to make it a three-score game late. And Gano's kick is right through. And that'll push the lead up to 17. And you figure with that, this game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point, being three scores down. I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. To return it, Alvin Kamara. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. 
Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. They're down big here late. I don't know, you just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out up. of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. First down, Breeze. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Mario Addison in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. And he'll indeed get him to the line and spike it here to stop the clock. The Saints on third down, just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and 17. Now Breeze. He's going to let it fly. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Ready? Five eight, five eight. Now Breeze got to have this one. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. And this one going to wrap up with Cam Newton going down to a knee. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game, they also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Panthers are winners here as we say so long from Charlotte.